Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Outside Insider here on Philly Sports Network with myself, Liam Jenkins. You know the score by now. We go over everything that's happened in the world of the Philadelphia Eagles over the past seven days and condense it down into Ryan Kerrigan's old Washington helmet and give it to you free of charge. No free helmets though. There won't actually be free helmet okay times have been tough all right we're still let's just baby steps hey you've all had a good week uh unlike myself who locked myself out of my office last friday so that was why there was no episode of the podcast because on friday evening i decided to do that and there was no one in the building till monday so that went well and then i actually had some things to do in my personal life and the eagles just decided to go do you know what for the first time in a month, let's just make three moves in three days because Liam won't be around that often. And just uh, just apply some pressure. Let's just be a bit toxic. So thanks for that, Eagles. You could have just waited like an extra day. Um, but we're back. We're happy. And we're available on all podcasting platforms. If you're not already subscribed, if you're watching this on YouTube, you don't know what's going on. This is the first 10 minutes of a longer podcast show. Okay, you can get the rest of it over at PSN Radio, which is available on all podcast platforms. Links in the description. Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Deezer, SoundCloud, I don't know, Walmart, everywhere. Based. Maybe Walmart cassettes, who knows. But if you want to listen to it, if you could subscribe to the show, it's the best way to support the podcast. And you get all of our PSN shows as well. So from Flipping the Birds, um, from the Baseline Scoop and all of the other ones, including things like Duke by the River. I want to start today's show, though, by going into something that is going to come as a bit of a shock. And, and it, no, it's nothing to do with my romantic life, for once. Um, I think the Eagles are a lot closer to competing than any of us thought, really. And that's going to be weird to say, because we've all spent this offseason um, in a mix of two mindsets. I feel like some people have approached it in the way that, hey, do you know what? This is going to be a rebuild that maybe takes two, three, four years. They've got three first round picks in the 2022 NFL draft. Therefore, they can then surround Hurts with talent or they can draft a CB1 or they can fill that void at that certain position, whether it be center or linebacker or wherever. Then you've got the other people who doubt Jalen Hurts, who doubt Nick Sirianni, who doubt Miles Sanders, who doubt the secondary, who I'm getting bored talking about it. And there isn't really a sentiment of positivity like anywhere until now. And the only way I found this was from a, a dawn. A, a dawn, a, I'd say like something dawned on me like like, well, like the dawn, I suppose, like the sunshine. I had an idea and it came from the signing of Ryan Kerrigan. Like how close are the Eagles to competing? Are they a cornerback away? And you can make the argument... Maybe. And I think that's very fair to say. The problem with that, though, is that many people go hyper-aggressive and will go all out for a guy like Steven Nelson, who is sat there twiddling his thumbs, watching his trading account, wanting to secure the bag. I mean, I'm pretty sure the guy has yoloed into Bitcoin because right now he is that desperate to secure a big payday to validate his worth that he's just leaving offers on the table. And we know teams have offered because... There is continued interest from Adam Schefter drumming up a market saying, oh, the New England and the Eagles and this team and that team. And everyone's interested in lovely Steven, but he hasn't got a team. Why is it? Should the Eagles be hyper aggressive and give Steven Nelson like an 8 million contract over a year? No, really. Let's be honest. Absolutely not. This isn't a team that can afford to take on an immediate cap hit after working so hard just to get under it in the first place. After working so hard to get veterans like Darius Slay to take huge pay cuts or rework their contracts just to facilitate the survival of the actual team. So no, they shouldn't go out there and bring in Steven Nelson for a ridiculous amount of money. However, he's probably the pinnacle of the CB2 world that you'd be looking at. With that said, if there was a way for the Eagles to offload one of their loan expensive contracts and acquire Steven Nelson or trade for another corner in the process, would they be a CB2 away? I think so. I, but my problem with it is, is I don't think the Eagles are working in a one-year window right now. I don't think they're working in a, a mindset 
where they're going. Do you know what? We are one corner away. Let's go get this guy. Super Bowl's back on, baby. Jalen Hurts to the moon. Money printer go burr. I don't think they're there. They're not at that point. However, I do feel as though that the addition of Ryan Carrigan could make Derek Barnett expendable. And I say that loosely. Now, for, for anyone that's been watching my content for a while, you know that I've been vying all off-season under any circumstance to get rid of Derek Barnett. I wake up and my first thought in the morning is, is he going to be traded today? It, is that it? You know, I, I'm pretty sure I'd call my girlfriend Derek at one point. Um, I, so I'm not into it. It wasn't it, optional. It just happened. I've been writing that much about it. So the Eagles bring in Ryan Kerrigan, someone who had 5.5 sacks in 2020, which is a big drop off from someone that's a full-time pro bowler that is has been the pinnacle of Washington's defensive line for almost a generation now. You know, he's had a trio of back-to-back -back seasons of 10-plus sacks. The guy's been an absolute monster. But since 2018, his snaps have dipped year on year. And after that dominant 13-sack season, he ended up missing four games in 2019. His snaps dipped from 75% to 59%. That then went down to 38% in 2020 with a 5.5 sack total. Do you know who else had 5.5 sacks last year? On 49% of snaps. So we're talking 11% more snaps same level of production, the one and only Derek Barnett. Now, I don't think that Ryan Kerrigan has been brought in here to stagnate the growth of this uh, pass rush. I think realistically, the team lost Vinnie Curry, they've loaded up on youth, and they need to get the motor going. They need to get the conveyor belt moving. And realistically, are we going to expect someone like Taron Jackson to go and compete right away? Are we going to expect someone like Patrick Johnson to go out there and get six sacks? Like, no. The Eagles, edge rotation right now, you've got Derek Barnett on the left, Josh Sweat on the left, maybe Patrick Johnson underneath. On the right will be Brandon Graham, Ryan Kerrigan. If there was a way, and I mean this loosely, to move Derek Barnett on to another team, bearing in mind he's got a $10 million cap hit now, and push Ryan Kerrigan into that starting role... I think that benefits everyone. I think that immediately alleviates a, a $10 million cap hit on the Eagles roster, which they could then use to go and get Steve. And that is the only scenario I would go after Steven Nelson, is if you can get that capital. Then you go and get Steven Nelson. Go and sign and give him what he wants for a year. I don't care. He can finger wag all he wants and be Jalen Mills for all I care, as long as it fills the void. But... If you can make Derek Barnett expendable through the addition of Ryan Kerrigan. The thing is, Ryan Kerrigan in Washington wasn't a bad pass rusher. Has he slowed down? Did he get injured? Yeah. Is he 33 years old nearly? Yeah. Was he also playing behind Montez Sweat and Chase Young? Yeah. I think if Derek Barnett was in that rotation, he'll probably be, I don't know, edge five. If we're being generous, like, I don't think we can sit here and say, hey, Derek Barnett will go great to Washington. This will be perfect. They don't need, at the minute, Ryan Carrigan to be a starter. But if they believe they can squeeze a little bit more juice out of him, that he's got one more eight or nine sack season left in him, that he's got a little bit more explosiveness coming off the edge, then... They're both in the same boat. Only one's costing you $7 million less than the other. You just brought in Milton Williams, who, yes, he's a defensive tackle. He can play the five tech, very versatile. He's built like a defensive end. Patrick Johnson, Taron Jackson, two freaky athletic players who need time to develop. Josh Sweat, who in his own right is coming off of a very good season. If there is a way that the coaching staff believe in Ryan Kerrigan enough to negate the loss of Derek Barnett, then do it. Other than that, it's going to be tricky. I, I don't think... I mean, realistically, I don't think Kerrigan's going to take snaps away from anyone. He will just fill Vinnie Curry's role. It's going to give uh, Patrick Johnson and Tyron Jackson essentially a limelight-free zone. They're not going to be Sharif Miller-level focused to, to go out and need to perform right away. They don't have to go out and produce. They're not going to be forced to step up to the equation. They can be allowed, like Josh Sweat was, if we remember, fourth round pick out of FSU, came in, struggled early on with injuries and durability, gradually built up to someone who is now very, very clearly, in my opinion, better than Derek Barnett. The team spent a flurry of similarly leveled picks 
on players. If they can give them time behind Carrigan to develop, that's perfect. That is exactly why Carrigan was built in. However, if you can free up $10 million and you're not going to pay Barnett at the end of the next season, regardless of what happens, maybe go out and trade for Greedy Williams. Maybe go and get someone like Steven Nelson. Scour the other markets. Maybe it's even Bradley Roby. Are the team a cornerback away from competing? They've got a refreshed coaching staff that believes in their quarterback that will mould the offence around Jalen Hurts. Someone who has executed a lot of single read looks in his career throughout Alabama and Oklahoma. Someone that now has a high spin winning wide receiver. A very versatile receiving room. A lot of body types in there. From Devonta Smith to Travis Fulgham to Trayvon Grimes to John Hightower to Jalen Rager to Greg Wood. There's a lot of different bodies. Two star tight ends at the moment if they're on their game. A plentiful backfield with guys like Sanders and Gainwell. And of course, now carry on my wayward son. An offensive line that's returning healthy. And a refreshed viewpoint from Nick Sirianni. He wants to utilize the strength of his players. On defense, we know that defensive line is good. We know the rotation's heavy. Eric Wilson is a stud at Mike Linebacker. You've got a strong safety, Anthony Harris. Are they a corner away from maybe not going on a deep playoff run? But I would say at least competing for the NFC East title to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Washington. They've got the easiest schedule in the NFL, according to their records last season. If, with three first-round picks, they believe they're close enough to go and get a corner and make this happen, now's the time to act. Be aggressive and do it. And you know what? A month ago, I wasn't about it. And this might sound contradictory. A month ago, I sat here and I was like, don't do it. Let guys like Michael Chiquette, like Kayvon Seymour, like Craig James develop. Let them be the corners. Let them battle for CB2. Let the DB coach, let Jonathan Gannon, let everyone on that staff do what they do. Let them show the front office what long-term development looks like. If they get some special teams reps out of it, great. If they've got a potential CB4, fantastic. Derek Stingley's just down the line. Doesn't matter what happens in 2021. This season is very much finding your feet. See what you've got. Three first rounders next season. Let's build something and see what these coaches can do with a year to develop players. With the moves they've made, with the way the offense is set, with that Kerrigan side, that's the catalyst. Without this, no, this doesn't happen. If Ryan Kerrigan can replace Derek Barnett and has one more season left as a starter, trade Barnett, get a corner for a year, even if it is Steven Nelson, and I think this team makes a run at the NFC East. And I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below if you're on YouTube. If not, tweet me at Liam Jenkins PSN. We're at the end of the first segment of the show. If you want to listen to it all, head over to PSN Radio on any good podcast platform. It will be up shortly. If listening to the podcast, you know what's coming next. It's thank you next. It's your questions from myself, Liam Jenkins. I'll see you soon.